Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi Ji, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you to the, to the Economic Times Global Business Summit. This summit is particularly special because we meet in a physical format after two years, leaving behind the devastation caused by the pandemic. Two years ago, like other countries, our economy shrunk. Many were quick to write obituaries about India's status as a rising economic power. All these naysayers have been proven wrong. Honorable Prime Minister, under your able stewardship and guided by your untiring efforts, India has demonstrated remarkable resilience, resolve, and self-reliance to emerge stronger out of the pandemic's long shadow. This new India has its eyes firmly on the future, even as it marches with determination on the Kartavya path. There's now an unmistakable air of excitement and optimism about India, at a time when large parts of the developed world stare at a recession. In this period of uncertainty, India stands out as a beacon of hope it's now the world's fifth largest economy and is on track to join the top three. It'll be one of the major engines of global growth in the years ahead, thanks to the manner in which our Prime Minister has combined Gati and Shakti. <laughs> Honorable Prime Minister, your vision of an India that will engage with the world from a position of strength and confidence is becoming clearer by the day. At home, you have aggressively championed the cause of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, which is not only creating more domestic champions, but also nudging multinational giants to make in India. Also, in this year, when India has assumed the G20 presidency, you are bringing the global community into your embrace. With Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is one family. This philosophy actually started taking concrete shape with India's supplies of critical medicines and vaccines to other countries as part of the Vaccine Maitri Initiative. More recently, India has helped Sri Lanka during its grave economic crisis. India's assistance to Turkey and Syria after the devastating earthquakes is another example of the Prime Minister's emphasis on Vasudeva Kutumbakam. As we enter Amrit Kal, India under Prime Minister Modiji's leadership has found confidence in articulating an India first policy. Driven by growing economic, military, and diplomatic prowess, as well as a sense of optimism about the future. As the Russia-Ukraine crisis has escalated, India's nuanced and measured response stands out as an example of this approach. Global leaders are now looking towards our Prime Minister to help end the conflict. Honorable Prime Minister, your unwavering commitment to nation building is reflected in the policies that you have so painstakingly crafted. India's COVID vaccination program stands out globally. It has ensured that we have escaped multiple waves of the pandemic. Over 2.2 billion doses of Made in India vaccines have given citizens the confidence to return to work and leisure in full force. This year's union budget underlined the government's decision to do the heavy lifting on capital expenditure. The proposed 33% rise in spending is part of a strategy to accelerate 
the pace of project execution and to trigger a cycle of private sector investment. Crucially, inclusion remains a key goal. Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Prayas is a guiding principle of this government. Debates and discussions are core characteristics of a vibrant democracy. This has also been the driving principle of the ET Global Business Summit, which has emerged as Asia's premier meeting place for global thought leaders. The deliberations this year will be centered on the theme, Resilience, Influence, Dominance. That addresses a post-pandemic reality. This is where we celebrate the present and anticipate the future. Honorable Prime Minister, there cannot be a better person than you, a champion of reforms and innovation, and a towering global leader today to set the context for this year's ETGBS. We look forward to your address for inspiration and guidance. Before that, I invite my elder brother, Mr. Samir Jain, Vice Chairman and Managing Director of the Times Group, to deliver a special address. Thank you.